The term tank battery refers to the combination of surface vessels gathered in one place to process the well stream into sellable or disposable products. In this chapter, we'll look into the different configurations of tank batteries and learn the terminologies related to those configurations. Tank batteries exist mainly in the upstream sector of the energy industry. Tank batteries are constructed to process the resources brought to the surface by EMP producers. Those resources are made sellable to midstream companies according to contractual guidelines. Not all byproducts of the process have value. They may need to be made ready for disposal at the tank battery. Both of these locations are considered to be gas wells. That means that there is a higher ratio of gas produced compared to the amount of oil or liquids produced. This ratio is referred to as the GOR, gas oil ratio. The well conditions are very different as indicated by the equipment that is needed to make up the tank battery. The paint scheme can tell us who owns the equipment. These two pictures are of oil wells. The material that the storage tanks are made of and the number of each tank gives us an idea of the volume and the makeup of the fluid produced at each well site. We'll discuss this in greater detail later in this chapter. There are two wells sharing the same pad in the top photo. Anytime there are multiple wells drilled on the same location, it's referred to as a multi-well pad. The picture on the left is a single gas well. A multi-well pad is pictured on the right. A central tank battery, or CTB, is where multiple wells are brought in to a single location for separation. The separation equipment will be larger and there will be more storage at a CTB when compared to a single well or multi-well pad. The wells are some distance away from the processing equipment and storage facilities. This was done to reduce the threat to the freshwater lake at the top of the picture. The makeup of this central tank battery shows us that multiple vessels are sometimes needed to get the resources to market. Several products are being separated from each other. Oil from water, gas from oil, gas from water, free water from emulsion, sulfur from gas, crude oil from emulsion, and that's just to name a few. This picture shows us the destination of three other resources produced at this central tank battery. Midstream companies will take over ownership of those resources at different areas labeled in the picture. The meter run will be recording gas sales that take place. The steel tanks on the location is where the oil sales take place. The fiberglass tanks tell us that salt water is being stored there or made ready for disposal. This rendering shows what different types of equipment might be needed on a single location to make resources sellable. The goal of a producer is to get their product to market as safely as possible with the least amount of expense. The size of the vessels need to be calculated in order to provide proper control of the well stream. If they are too small, they may not get the proper separation they need. If they are too big, they may be taking up unnecessary space and are more costly to make. Natural gas once vented to atmosphere is now being recovered by a VRU and then sold or combusted depending on regulatory compliance or economics. This is becoming a more common practice among upstream producers. Berms are constructed around the storage tanks to lessen the impact to the environment in case of an accident. Those accidents can be from natural causes like wind and storms. They can also be man-made as well. This picture shows the effort some producers take in order to be a good neighbor to those who are sharing resources on top of the ground. Thank you for participating in this training.